my name is Megan Harnett, and I will be reading from the My Lady Nail Technology book, uh, Chapter 4, Communicating for Success. So communication is very important. It's not only important for you to be able to communicate your thoughts to your clients. You also have to be able to communicate with your supervisors, boss, co-workers. Um, that's how it works. If you cannot talk and communicate and listen, it's going to be very hard. But in this chapter, they will help you. So in this outline, we'll be learning why study communicating for success, human relations, communication basics, the client consultation, needs assessment, special issues in communication, and in salon communication. Your learning objectives. After completing this chapter, you'll be able to list the golden rules of human relations, define effective communication, conduct a successful client consultation needs assessment, explain how to handle an unhappy client, Describe how to build open lines of communication with your coworkers and salon managers. And the key terms to remember are client consultation, client consultation form, effective communication, employee evaluations, and reflective listening. So, in uh, first page, figure 4-1, communicating is part of building lasting relationships with your clients. Do you hear that? That's how you, you keep them. You talk to them. You listen to them and make sure that their needs are getting met through communication and you also your needs. Whatever you need from the client, make sure you are effectively communicating that. Uh, why study communicating for success? Nail technicians should have a thorough understanding of communicating for success because effective communication will serve as the basis for all long-lasting relationships with your clients and coworkers. As a professional, you'll need to build strong relationships based on trust, clarity, and loyalty in order to have a successful career. You must be able to verbalize your thoughts and ideas with your clients, with your colleagues and supervisors. The close-knit salon and spa environment will present complex and sometimes difficult interpersonal issues. You will need to effectively communicate in order to navigate through them successfully. So any any indifferences that you might have with people in the salon, um, communication can break those hard barriers, just being able to talk to people properly and listen. Um, the ability to control communication effectively expresses ideas in a professional manner and is necessary skill for success in any career. This is really um, particularly, especially, particularly especially in uh, personal nail technology. Uh, human relations. No matter where you work, you will find that some people are harder to get along with than others. It's not always possible to understand what people need, even when you know them well. This can lead to misunderstandings. The ability to understand people is the key to operating effectively in many professions. When you clearly understand the motives and needs of others, you'll be in a better position to do your job professionally. Because all people have the same needs, the best way to understand others is to begin with a clear understanding of yourself. Uh, mutual respect, which transforms a good nail technician into a trusted advisor and colleague, naturally follows. Here's a brief look at the basics of human relations along with some practical tips for dealing with situations that are, you are likely to encounter. Human beings are social animals. We like to interact with other people. As human beings, we enjoy giving our opinion and take pleasure in having people help us. Also, we feel pride when we get to use our abilities to help others. A fundamental factor in human relations involves a person's sense of security. When people feel secure, they're happy, calm, and confident. No matter how secure you are as an individual and a beauty professional, there will be times when you encounter people in situations that are difficult to handle. Uh, to become skilled in human relations, learn to make the best of the situation. Here are some good ways to handle the ups and the downs. Respond instead of reacting. Believe in yourself. Talk less, listen more. Be attentive. Take your own temperature. Human relations can be rewarding or demoralizing. The result you achieve will depend on how much you are willing to give and how well you have prepared yourself for the day's services. The golden rules of human relations communicate from the heart. A smile is worth a million times more than a sneer, so a frown. <laughs> it's easier to make an enemy. It's harder to keep a friend. See what happens when you ask for help instead of just reacting. Show people you care by listening to them and trying to understand their point of view. Compliment people, even if they are challenging or unpleasant. And not a rude compliment like, mm. you know what I'm saying? You have to really be genuine because people can tell when you, you're just saying something. And for every service, 
that you do for others, do not forget to do something for yourself. Laugh often. Show patience with other people's flaws. Build shared goals. Be a team player and partner with your clients. Always remember that listening is the best relationship builder. Communicating basics. Effective communication is the act of successfully sharing information between two people or groups of people so that the information is successfully understood. We'll read it again. Effective communication is the act of successfully sharing information between two people or groups of people so that the information is successfully understood. When you and your client are both communicating clearly and up on it about an upcoming service, your chances of pleasing that person soar. <laughs> Meeting and greeting new clients. One of the most important communications you will have is the first time you meet a client. To earn a client's trust, you should always approach a new client with a smile on your face. Always introduce yourself. Set aside a few minutes to take new clients on a quick tour to salon. Introduce clients to people they may have interaction with while in the salon, including potential service providers for other services such as skincare or makeup. Be yourself. Do not try to fool clients by representing yourself as someone or something you're not. Intake form. Prior to sitting at your station, every new client should fill out an intake form, also called a client questionnaire or a client consultation form. I'm going to read that again. Prior to sitting at your station, every new client should fill out an intake form, also called a client questionnaire or client consultation form. Look at figure 4-3. You see how he's welcoming his client with a warm greet. He's being very interpersonal. That's a chance that you'll get with your clients. This is um, a client consultation form. And you can have it read, uh, Dear Client, please take the time to fill this out. And it has the name, their address, phone number, daytime, evening phone, or mobile phone, email address. Uh, what's your preferred method of communication? The gender, is it a male or a female? How did you hear about me? Um, if you were referred, who referred you? Please answer the following questions. Approximately when was your last service? Especially, um, you don't want to do something too fast or when it's not due. So you want to know when was the last service? In the past year, have you had any of the following services done in either um, out of the salon, in or out of the salon, manicure, nail enhancements, pedicure, or other? This is um, a continuation of the client consultation form. It could be two pages, three pages, just depending on how much info you want on your client. Um, take some time to review this. Okay, on page 48, focus on understanding the total look concept. While the enhancements of your client's image should always be your primary concern, it is important to remember that nails, skin, and hair are reflective of an entire lifestyle. Someone who prefers a more dramatic look on the other hand, we'll choose nail designs, hair designs, clothing, and accessories that demand greater attention and allow for more options. So basically, everyone's different. Some salon intake forms ask for a lot of detailed information. Others do not. How to use the client intake form. The client intake form can be used from the moment a client calls the salon to make an appointment, when scheduling an appointment, let the client know that you and the salon will require some information before you can be serviced, before you can begin their service. Allow 
Also allow time in your schedule to do a 15, a five to 15 minute client consultation. And you see in figure four or five, they have someone with a classic look of nails. And then in figure four or six, someone with a dramatic look of nails. You will find out in the client consultation what more are they going for. Maybe you could ask where they work or if someone typing a lot at desk, they tend to have sometimes traditionally short nails, but then someone that maybe is in um, the fashion, um, works in retail, they might want longer nails. It just depends. Everybody's different. Okay, the client consultation needs assessment. The client consultation, also known as a needs assessment, is the verbal communication with the client that determines his or her needs and how to achieve the desired result. I'm going to read it again. The client consultation, also known as a needs assessment, is the verbal communication with the client that determines his or her needs and how to achieve the desired results. Preparing for the client consultation. For the client consultation to be effective, it is important that you will be well prepared to make the most of this dialogue. To facilitate the process, you should have a variety of pictures showing different shapes, lengths, and designs. Have a portfolio of your work on hand. When you show the photos, explain why you performed the various services the way you did. The consultation area. Presentation counts for a lot in this business that is concerned with style and appearance. To do so effectively, you will need a freshly cleaned and uncluttered workspace. The 10-step consultation method. Every consultation should be structured so that you cover all the key points. To ensure that you cover all the basics, keep a list of the following 10 key points at your station. Modify the list as needed for each actual service. Review the intake form. Read the intake form carefully and refer to it often during the consultation process. Assess your client's nails. Are they long, short, somewhere in between? Are the nails healthy and strong, brittle, or weak? Excuse me. Discover likes and dislikes. Always ask clients what they like and do not like about their nails. Analyze your client's hands and fingertips. Determine the ideal length and the shape of the nails based on the shape of their fingertips and nail bed. Review clients' lifestyles. What do their career and personal lifestyles entail? Do they spend a lot of time outdoors? Do they swim every day? Are they executives in a conservative industry? Artists? Stay-at-home parents? Do they have hobbies such as woodworking or sculpturing that are rough on the nails? Do they have strong personal styles that they wish to protect? project? How much time are they willing to invest in nail services? Show and tell. Encourage clients to flip, flip through your photo collections and point out finished looks that they like and why. This is a good time to get a real grasp on whether they understand and accept any personal limitations. Listening to clients and then repeating in your own words what you think they are telling you is critical to having a clear understanding of what both are really saying this is known as reflective listening okay so when someone says their needs or wants for their nails you listen to it and you repeat it back in your own words that is called reflective listening make suggestions once you have enough information you can make valid suggestions Upsell services. Never hesitate to suggest additional services to make new looks complete in a, uh, or better in some way. Discuss upkeep and maintenance. Counsel all your clients on the lifestyle limitations associated with a given nail style. Review the consultation. Reiterate everything that you have agreed on. So go over it again. Concluding the service. 
Once the services are finished and the client has let you know that she is satisfied, take a few minutes to record the results on her client record form on figure 4-7. See, you see the record form? It has the first name, last name, confirm appointments, home phone, work phone, cell, email, text, their preference, um, their phone, home, cell, work, email, Address, their home address, city, state they live in, a zip code, female, male, birthday, married, children, anniversary, profession, like their job, primary service provider, their doctor, who were they referred by, any service notes, and any retail history of the things that they bought. This can come in handy for a lot of things if you want to mail out or send um, whichever mail they put down. You can send uh, coupons, send them something for their birthday. It comes in handy a lot. Um, focus on retailing. The best way to make retailing recommendations is to use the three-step plan to discuss the what, why, and how recommendation. One, once you have chosen a product for the client, explain. This is what I recommended. Next, explain why you recommended it. And finally, describe how she should use the product at home. Education, educating the client using these three steps helps her to better understand your recommendations and makes selling home care products much easier. And did you know, when referring to patrons, some salons use the word client while others use the word guests. Spas are more likely to use guests because of the amount of time the client spends on the premises and the fact that spa guests often have lunch during their visit. Medical spas have returned to using client because many of these spas are bound by medical privacy laws when it comes to record keeping. Additionally, guest is never used in the profession of medical field. Okay, that's interesting. Page 52, special issues in communication. Although you may do everything in your power to communicate effectively, you will sometimes encounter situations that are beyond your control. Handling tardy clients. Tardy clients are a fact of life in everyday industry because Dell technicians are so dependent on appointments and scheduling to maximize working hours, a client who is very late for an appointment or who is uh, habitually late can cause problems. No one benefits, not you, not the salon, and certainly not your clients. When tardy clients cause scheduling conflicts to arise, here are a few guidelines for handling them. Know and abide by the salon's appointment policy. If your tardy client arrives and you have the time to take her without jeopardizing other appointments, let your client know why you are taking her even though she is late. As you get to know clients, you will learn who is habitually late. You may want to schedule such people um, the last appointment of the day. If you're running very late, have the reception if they're running very late, have the receptionist call or text your clients to up, um, apprise them of the situation. Handling scheduling mix-ups. We are all human. We all make mistakes. Chances are you have gone to an appointment on a certain day at a certain time, only to discover that you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. Make another appointment for the client and be sure the salon has her telephone number so that the appointment can be confirmed. Okay, handling unhappy clients. No matter how hard you try to provide excellent service to your clients, once in a while you will encounter a client who is dissatisfied. You see down in figure four, six, I mean four, eight, sorry. It looks like the cash or the girl at the desk is like, hold up. And then the lady, uh, the guest or whatever, she looks like she's complaining about something with her nails or she's not happy. Here are some guidelines to follow. 
Try to find out why the client is unhappy. Ask for specifics. If it's possible to change what she dislikes so immediately, or do so immediately, sorry. If the problem cannot be fixed, honestly explain why. Never argue with the client or try to force your opinion on them. Do not hesitate to ask for help or a more experienced nail technician or your salon manager. Talk with your salon manager after the experience. Handling differences. As a nail technician, you will find clients you are more, most likely to attract or similar to yourself in age, style, and taste. Without both older and younger clients and ones from the different social groups, you will not be able to build a social client base. When working with clients who come from different generations, the basic rules of professionalism should guide you. When referring to their hands, do not refer to aging skin. Instead, talk about dryness and solutions to recommend, to remedy the situation. Younger clients may not be on proper etiquette, but many keep with the latest celebrity trends. When it comes to slang, the same word can have different meanings across cultures. So just beware of your older clients and your younger clients. Younger clients may talk a little differently and you still you have to keep up if you want to keep clients like that. Some people only service older people and some people only service like young people their age. Um, if you want to be marketable and competitive in this industry, you service both and you just know how to react to both the young and the old and the middle aged. <laughs> the trendy the more conservative. You just have to know how to do it all. Focus on take talking points. Let's imagine a longtime client reveals to you one day that she and her husband are going through a messy divorce. You care for her. You want to be sympathetic as she reveals increasingly personal details. Other practitioners and their clients are soon listening to every word of the conversation. Uh-oh. You want to be helpful and supportive, but this is not the right time or place. What can you do? Here are some things. Tell her you understand the situation is very difficult, but that while she is in the salon, you want to do everything in your power to give her a break from it. Change the subject. Find a reason to excuse yourself. Acknowledge her by saying, I'm sorry to hear that. And suggest a mini relaxation service. So yeah, you don't want to keep be unprofessionalism and unprofessional. You have to remember everybody surrounding you in the salon. They might be there to relax and release, but at the same time, you want to be polite to your client. So you could just tell them, you know, I don't want anyone else to hear what we're discussing. So let we'll um have to talk about it another time or. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that you're going through this, but I'm going to make sure you feel good while you're here. And um, a lot of times you are not a clinical therapist, so you might suggest like maybe you need a doctor or a therapist. It's nothing wrong with that. Getting too personal. Sometimes when a client forms a bond of trust with her nail technician, she may have a hard time differentiating between a professional and a personal relationship. Do not engage in an attempt to fulfill the role of counselor, career guide, parental, sounding board, or a motivational coach for any of your clients. If your client gets too far off topic, use neutral subjects to bring her back to conversation about beauty. What can we do to make your visit better today? <laughs> if your client is gossiping, change the subject as soon as you can. Then describe some treatments or recommend home care. That's how you keep it neutral. Yeah, we don't want to gossip. You never know who knows who or just anything. It's just messy and unprofessional. You want to keep your clients coming back because they're able to trust you. How can you trust somebody if they're talking about everybody? Books, 
movies, videos, and celebrities can all be used to move into conversations about a particular look or style. In salon communication, behaving in a professional manner is the first step in making meaningful in salon communication a reality. Communicating with coworkers in a work environment, you will not have the opportunity to handpick your colleagues. There will always be people you like or relate to better than others. Keep these points in mind as you interact and communicate with your coworkers. Treat everyone with respect, remain objective. Be honest and be sensitive. Remain neutral. Seek help from someone you respect. Do not take things personal. Communicating with your manager. Another very important relationship for you within the salon is the one you will build with your manager. Your manager is probably the one who hired you and thus responsible for your training. Here are some guidelines for interacting and communicating with your salon manager. Be a problem solver. Get the facts straight. Be open and honest. Do not gossip or complain about colleagues. Be open to constructive criticism. Communicating during an employee evaluation. Salons and spas that are well run will make a priority to conduct frequent and thorough employee evaluations. Take some time to look over the employee evaluation document. Remember the criteria on the evaluation are there for the purpose of helping you become better, a better nail technician and to ensure the salon success. As the time for an evaluation draws near, try filling out the form yourself. Before your evaluation meeting, write down any thoughts or questions so you can share them with your manager. When you meet with your manager, show her your self-evaluation and tell her you are serious about your improvement and growth. At the end of the meeting, thank your manager for taking the time to complete the evaluation and feedback for guidance. All right, we have reached the end of the chapter. Here are some review questions to see if you remember or retain what you've just learned. Uh, We'll be having the chapter test over chapter four. Thanks, guys.